It's Talk Funny, a podcast by Mark Bailey and other comics from all over. We ended up in Japan because in a sacred sumo circle, you may have a heart attack, but you cannot catch cooties. Life-saving nurses, yuck. The Talk Funny podcast from NagoyaRadio.com and Nagoya Comedy. Here's Mark Bailey. Welcome back to another edition of Talk Funny. I'm Mark Bailey. We're here with Steve Howard. As we kind of tease... Uh, hi, Steve. Say hi. Nope. <laughs> As we kind of teased last time, uh, there was a story of Logan and I, and we we were booking through basically temp agencies were booking our comic uh, appearances for us. So you get what you pay for. We weren't paying for a manager. Yeah. So we had agreed to do something. I think it was called the Apollo Lounge, and it was hmm. the Apollo Lounge. Yeah, it was in Brooklyn. It's a small club. We'd been there before. We'd, it was a blues club. We'd seen, uh, we'd seen um, Bobby Blue Bland there, and we kind of knew the audience, and uh-huh. we knew it was Brooklyn at that time. It actually wasn't a black audience. It was kind of yuppies who were just <laughs> discovering the blues. So we had our yuppie yeah. comedy set ready. This is in the 80s. So we're ready to, to go in. And then the temp agency calls and says, they're looking for you guys at the Apollo Theater. I'm like, why are they looking for us there? Because <laughs> you because that's where I booked you. I'm like, that's an all black Harlem. Oh, I don't think we're going up there. <laughs> this is the eighties. Harlem is a lot nicer now yeah. than it was then. But mm. back then white people just didn't go to Harlem. They just didn't go. I was like, what happened yeah. to Steve? Well he went to Harlem. And he never came back. <laughs> and so she goes, Well, I booked you there and they already have people in the audience and you guys are gonna open you're gonna open for Chris Rock wasn't wasn't old enough to be big then. It might have been uh this guy named Earthquake if you've ever heard of him, mm. big, he's a hilarious guy, hilarious guy. And we met him, he was a nice guy, and he had a real solid fan base. Uh-huh. But they didn't want white boys getting up, <laughs> you know, messing with their buzz before Earthquake came on and, and told fart jokes and, <laughs> and you know, talked about uh, different classes of black people. We didn't have any of, the, of that kind of material. Mm. So I said, well, we're not, we weren't prepared to do that. She goes, well, you need to get up here. And so I called a, a good friend of uh, my dad's, is a comedian, Pat Cooper, and he's um, he's kind of almost like our, he was almost like my godfather. He's uh, um, he's actually an Italian guy. He he was funny way back with Don Rickles. He's kind of that kind of guy. He's kind wow. of an Italian Don Rickles. Mm. Somebody, you know, if you don't laugh, he'll he'll open you a new um, <laughs> a, 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 a new bodily opening for you <laughs> if you don't laugh at his joke the right way. He's very on edge. And Thank you very much. Don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. Don't stand. You make me nervous. Don't stand. What a thrill. Ah. Where the hell is this place? <laughs> I left New York City. They say, go to the turnpike. Then you take after the time pack is number 11. Number 11, you go to 9. Now you go to 35. I thought they hit the numbers. <laughs> right? Now you come down 35. It says you see a sign, Joe's Pizzeria. I passed. <laughs> they got the sign at Club Benet in the yard. <laughs> I can't believe it, I said. Nine times I've passed this place. And you ladies in the audience particularly, I hope you're not offended because I used the word ass about 19 times in my show. I didn't use it, use it to show you disrespect because I could never do this. I use it because in my heart I really believe it's one of the finest words in our vocabulary and without it you can't walk forward. <laughs> and remember, that's the filet mignon right over there. Because God forbid you were drowning in the ocean, a shark ain't going for your ankle. It's going right for your ass. <laughs> so I say respect it, please respect it. Next time you come out of the shower, look in the mirror and say hi, ass. <laughs> and if you get an answer, run. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I love you. Good night. So I called him and I said, We're, they just booked this by accident at the Apollo Theater. And he goes, hang on, you're not going there without me. <laughs> he goes, I'll drive you up. I'll drive you up there. I'm like, no, I think we just take the subway. And he goes, no, 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 no. He goes, he goes if, you, if, I, if I show up at your place and you're not there, I'll kill you myself. <laughs> so he goes, you just wait. So he drove us up there and it was just rowdy crowd they're already mm-hmm. drunk and stoned and all black guys <laughs> wow. and they're rounding the like, earthquake where's earthquake where's earthquake <laughs> the manager manager is black guy and he goes are you guys supposed to be here and i said no we're not supposed to be here <laughs> and pat cooper said well, you're not doing we're, you're not getting on yet he got a chair he turned it toward the audience <laughs> sat in front of the stage and he had these two bulges in his pants and a coat over him <laughs> and he goes uh i'm he goes i've got two uh, pistols with me in case things get bad i said you know maybe we could just leave if things get bad he goes if things get bad you're going to have to go through the exit and I'm going to have to hold people off to get to the car. I'm like, what? He goes, you guys are not supposed to be here. So we got on because we didn't change our material uh, and I got on. I think my opener was, so who likes to play golf? 
<laughs> Boo, you white cracker! <laughs> you know, I had another one about, you know, I live in Brooklyn and uh, past by Greenwich Village. There's a lot of a lot of gay guys in New York now. They're like, you look like one of them! <laughs> Just heckled and heckled. It's like, where's Earthquake? And I think oh, there was a guy before named Alfonso, and apparently he had a big crowd too. Uh, the guy before Earthquake, and he was on next after after Logan and I. They were going like, where's Alfonso? And they wouldn't let me do my, my stick. And I, I think I was doing hockey jokes, golf jokes. <laughs> And and I was doing something about uh, this is long before Tiger Woods. Right? Yeah, this is yeah, <laughs> this is back and tennis jokes. So there were no black tennis players. There were no black golf players. There weren't any non-Canadian, non-Russian hockey players yeah. at the time. And so I was, I, I, I had that, and I had some other. Oh, I said, yeah. Uh, so who was in band class in school? Like, Screw band class. It was just X-rated. Just the the epithets and the mm. everything was horrible. So finally, I said. I was getting irritated. They said, bring Alfonso on. I said, you, we can't bring Alfonso on because I killed Alfonso. <laughs> and they're like, oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. I'm like, I killed him because he was in. Pat Cooper knew where I was going. He turned around. He goes, just say goodbye, kid. I said, goodbye, kid. And he goes, just get out of here. Uh, oh, and I, when Logan got on before me, and he, you don't say you people. To that crowd, yeah, yeah. he goes. You people aren't listening to me. What do you mean, you people? He goes. He goes. You got you. You people don't. You never listen. You don't listen. You never listen. What do you mean? We never listen. Pat's like, okay, next. <laughs> so we got out of there alive. Wow. And Pat Cooper said, I don't know who's booking your things, but your 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 gigs, but maybe get somebody else. I mean, yeah, I think <laughs> maybe. The next week we played. We actually did play the Apollo Lounge. It was actually, we got rescheduled, and that place was kind of. A lot of yuppies, but you'd have a couple of mob guys there. Mm. And so the mob guys would get, uh, we got in trouble with Logan because the mob guys would go like, let me buy you a drink. So we didn't know not to do that. Yeah. So the guy bought, one of the guys bought me a drink. He goes, come, come sit at the table, you're a funny guy. Hey, hey <laughs> come buy me, you know, buy a drink. So I'm sitting there and then a rival uh, mob, mob gang, <laughs> another guy sends over and goes, this drink's for you. And I'm like, oh, okay, but I'm already, I'm fine. I'm like, no. <laughs> so the, wait, wait, the waitress, she goes, you want me to send it back? And I said, yeah. And he goes, she goes, I, she goes, I suggest you just drink it. He's watching. And she goes, I'm not taking it back. You can take it back. So I just went, thanks anyway. Thanks anyway. So the guy came over. And said, well, you, you're going to drink you're gonna drink a drink of his table. You're not going to drink a drink at my table. I'm like, okay. So we got over there. They're playing us against each other. Mm. And it's just dangerous. That's another reason I don't like meet and greets. Yeah. Did you have any meet and greet uh, experiences or any kind of bad experiences from the audience uh, after your show or something? The, the, the nice thing about... Uh Mostly performing in Nagoya, <laughs> our audience are usually people we all know, so nothing, nothing too bad uh, in, in my case. Um, yeah, my main thing is just uh, when I get up and perform my material and get zero laughs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just takes uh, time to get to know the audience, and like I said before, every audience is different. Sometimes you need a bodyguard, uh, you know, if you're playing at the Apollo, and other times you've got a very friendly audience, and we've had... Uh, you know, we pretty much know the crowd here at, at Nagoya and the other cities that we play. We kind of know if we're going to one a little bit north from here or one a little bit east from here. We kind of know the different quirks. One city not so close to us that we played at before, uh, we played a couple times, and they, they are famous for being, well, I'll say it, Toyohashi is famous for being <laughs> the very passive-aggressive hecklers where they will say, hey, great show to you uh, to your face, yeah. but two weeks later they'll heckle you on Facebook and say, yeah, I didn't really enjoy that show. Yeah. So, well, I was going to mention, we don't really have uh, necessarily have problems with the audience members, but I know in your case you've had problems with drunk comedians after our shows on several occasions. We've kind of thinned the herd a little bit. We've had, we had a guy who was doing lithium and God knows what else and drinking <laughs> and the guy said, you know, I'm going to stop that other activity. It's not, it doesn't go well with my lithium. I'm like, yeah, I think that drinking doesn't go well with your lithium either. I looked it up on Google and it says that it'll kill you. So yeah. uh, this guy was getting violent. Then we had another guy who was who assaulted two of our Israeli fans who, who showed up, these two <laughs> girls, and he told them they weren't real Jews, and, you know, uh, and then, then he challenged me to a duel. Is it, seven, what is it, 1712? Ch challenged me to a duel outside. So I said, you know, I'm not your dual partner. I'm your boss. I mean, I'm kind of booking yeah. these gigs. So maybe uh, I think I asked him to do, you know, write new material from now on. And he said, well, I'm not going to do that. Mm. I think you mistook my demand for a request. <laughs> I wasn't asking you. I'm saying that's what we have to do. Our audience is only about 30 to 50 percent different each time. Right. So we've still got the same people coming and they expect us to be funny. So we have to write 
our 10-minute set, uh, I've said so many times, our 10-minute set that we do each month has to be different pretty much each month. Mm. Yeah, you know, um, I was going to mention that as well. Um, I've noticed now that uh, with comedy, I tend to write better when uh, there's more pressure, when, when I've got some pressure on me, <laughs> like when it comes down to two weeks before our show, then I'll, I mean, I've always got my notebooks. So I've got jokes and stuff that I've been writing down for several months, but to put it all together, I've noticed that um, if I've got that sort of two weeks pressure before our show, then I can kind of put it all together a lot better. Um, yeah, there's something to that. Uh, also, the the you know if you're writing stuff like I've written stuff about a month in advance, mm-hmm. but then I end up not using that because it's not pressing enough, right? And that's something that I'll use as filler, or maybe mm-hmm. if I have an emergency show, I'll use that. If you're writing something and you got a show in a month, there's really no there's no deadline, there's no pressure, there's no reason for for you to write it then. I mean, I always write things down so I don't forget them. Right. But the other thing is like a month before, it would probably be funnier if you told it right after you think about it. You've yeah. got all the impetus, you've got all the details, and if you tell it a month from now, you kind of it's kind of like hearing somebody else's story and right. now you're trying to repeat it. Yeah. So this is really funny when I told it to myself in the mm-hmm. shower yeah. <laughs> about a month ago, but I can't remember what was so funny about it. Yeah. And I think you posted something on Facebook uh, several months ago which was a, a cartoon that you shared from I forgot who originally did it and it was something about writing down things when you when you think of them and uh-huh. it was a cartoon of a lady oh oh when you're asleep and you write something down <laughs> yeah and she wrote something down the next morning she looks at it and the it, it was like with the glove right you know, it's like, that's <laughs> yeah. why is that funny I had that too where I do the um, the recorder because it's easier uh-huh. to use yeah. in the dark I'll just turn the recorder on in my iPhone and I'll say something into it and recently I did one like this was, I woke up from a dream where my closer was just killing in my dream. I'm like, I've got to remember, if I remember the punchline, I'll remember the rest of the joke. Right. And the punchline was, call your sister. So I wrote that down. That's all I wrote down. The next morning, I'm like, why is this funny? So then I had to write a bit about why that would be funny, mm. call your sister. But the actual, in the dream, yeah. you know, it was a lot funnier. Mm. So um, you, you've mentioned before that you've actually stayed up most of the night just right. to not forget your bed. Yeah, my in fact, my whole Bigfoot routine, which is what I'm kind of somewhat famous for, that that uh, just came to me in the middle of the night. And in my case, you know, my my wife and my son are we all still sleep in the same room, so uh, I can't really just jump up and, and go out of the room and write it down because it'll wake her up and then she'll get mad, and um, that's never funny. So uh, um, yeah, so that that Bigfoot routine, I basically stayed awake all night plus i was excited about it but i stayed awake all night just running it through my brain and then finally when uh, everybody woke up in the morning I, I i jotted it down but um yeah th- i've done that a couple of times for comedy routines and short stories and different things and i could probably help you with that uh w- you get to a point where you're actually not sleeping with your wife anymore <laughs> if you just copy what i do on stage right. <laughs> i think we pretty much exhausted that topic and we've been mark bailey and steve howard this has been talk funny thanks for listening